very much. Uh, I welcome members to the second meeting in 2016 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. As always, ask members to switch off mobiles, f phones, please. I um, have to note at this point that Richard Baker has resigned as an MSP, so we are down to four. I hope we won't be losing any more uh, before the session is up. And I'd also like to record on behalf of the committee uh, our grateful thanks to Richard for his diligent work over the recent while. Um, with that, I turn to agenda item one, which is a decision on taking business in private. It's proposed that we take item six in private. Uh, this will enable the committee to consider a draft of its second quarterly report for the parliamentary year 2015-16. Do we agree to take it in private, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two, instruments subject to affirmative procedure. The Police Act 1997 and the Protection of Vulnerable Groups Scotland Act 20, sorry, 2007 Remedial Number 2 Order 2015, SSI 2015-423. Uh, this instrument could be clearer in two ways. The meaning of paragraph 75 of Schedule 8B to the Police Act 1997, as inserted by Article 38 of the Order, could be clearer. Schedule 8B lists offences which require to be disclosed in response to an application for higher level disclosure, subject to rules contained in the Police Act 1997 as amended by the order. Paragraph 75 of that schedule lists an offence under Section 67 2 and 3 of the Medicines Act 1968 as such an offence. The policy intention indicated by the Scottish Government is to list any offence committed under Section 67.2 and separately any offence committed under Section 67.3. Given the words in paragraph 75 their ordinary meaning, however, the paragraph appears to list only to list an offence where it is an offence under both Section 67.2 and 67.3. Given the terms of section 67, 2 and 3, it's not possible for an offence under one subsection to constitute an offence under the other subsection. However, the wording gives the risk, the rise to the risk of confusion for lay readers of the instrument. The meaning of paragraph 81C of Schedule 8B to the Police Act 1997, as inserted by Article 3.8 of the Order, could also be clearer. The policy intention, as indicated by the Scottish Government, was to delete paragraph 81C as it does not contain any offence. The continued inclusion of the paragraph in Schedule 8b gives rise to a risk of confusion for lay readers of the instrument. Does the committee therefore agree to draw this instrument to the Parliament's attention under reporting ground H? Yes. Thank you. The Rehabilitation of Offenders Act 1990s 1974 Exclusions and Exceptions Scotland Amendment Order 2016 Draft. This raises the same issues as SSI 2015-423. Does the committee therefore agree to also draw this instrument to the Parliament's attention under reporting ground H? Yes. Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Welfare Fund Scotland Regulations 2016 Draft nor on the Advice and Assistance and Civil Legal Aid, Financial Conditions and Contributions, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016 Draft, nor the Public Services Ombudsman Act 2002 Amendment Order 2016 Draft, nor the Bankruptcy and Debt Advice Scotland Act 2014 Consequential Provisions Order 2016 Draft, nor on the Water Environment Amendment of Part 2A of the Environmental Protection Act 1990, Contaminated Land Scotland Regulations 2016 Draft. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. The committee may wish to note that the Bankruptcy and Debt Advice Scotland Act 2014 Consequential Provisions Order 2016 fulfils the Scottish Government's undertaking to bring forward an order under Section 55 of the Bankruptcy and Debt Advice Scotland Act 2014. The instrument is made in consequence of that Act and it amends Sections 7, 2b and 4 of the Bankruptcy Scotland Act 1985 to bring these provisions in line with Section 16 of the Bankruptcy Act. Sorry, the Bankruptcy Scotland Bill. Agenda item three is instrument subject to negative procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Housing Scotland Act 2014 Commencement Number 5 and Consequential Provision Order 2015, SSI 2015-430, nor the Management of Offenders Act Scotland Sorry, the Management of Offenders Etc. Scotland Act 2005, Specification of Persons Amendment Order 2015, SSA 2015 431, 
nor the Public Bodies Joint Working Integration Joint Boards and Integration Joint Monitoring Committees, Scotland Amendment No. 2, Order 2015, SSI 2015-432, nor the Food Scotland Act 2015, Consequential Provisions No. 2, Order 2015, SSI 2015-433, nor the Inshore Fishing Prohibition of Fishing and Fishing Methods, Scotland Order 2015, SSI 2015-435. Nor the Inshore Fishing Prohibited Methods of Fishing, Loose Bay 20, Order 2015, SSI 2015-436. Nor the South Arran Marine Conservation Order 2015, SSI 2015-437. Nor on the Waste Meaning of Recovery, Miscellaneous Amendments, Scotland, Order 2015, SSI 2015, 438. Uh, do members have any comments to make? John. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Convener. Uh, I have a sort of minor concern about the South Arran Marine Conservation Order 2015-437, um, uh, inasmuch as I have been uh, approached by the Clyde Fishermen's Association. And I have concerns about the government apparently uh, not consulting with uh, them in particular, or perhaps everyone they should have. Uh, although I understand that notwithstanding uh, the CFA's uh, legal advice that not making the CFA aware of this order does not apparently affect its validity. Uh, since I believe that this, the Clyde Fishermen's Associations are essentially concerned the policy of this instrument, I would suggest that they make representation to the Rural Affairs and Climate Change Committee, and I think that is the appropriate place for them to uh, make their objections. Right, thank you for that comment. With that, is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Thank you. In relation to SSI 2015-431, our legal advisers have noted that this order and the management of offenders, etc., Scotland Act 2005, Commencement Number 8 Order, 2015, SSI 2015-429, replaces the provisions of the Management of Offenders, Scotland Act 2005, Commencement Number 8 and Consequential Provisions Order 2015, SSI 2015-397. The Scottish Government confirmed to the Committee in relation to that order that in its view it is of no legal effect and undertook to lay the corrective instruments. The Scottish Government has confirmed the National Archives with the National Archives that the SSI 2015-397 will not be printed as a Scottish statutory instrument and no longer appears on World Wide Web legislation gov.uk. The committee may wish to note that these steps have been taken in highly unusual circumstances where the Scottish ministers have publicised subsequently to laying an instrument which has been purportedly made by ministers that the entire instrument is of no legal effect. The committee has also reported to the Parliament that there is doubt whether the instrument is into various and the instrument has, been laid, has not been laid for approval by the Parliament. The committee may also wish to note that normal practice is to expressly revoke provisions to remove them from the statute book. While these steps have been taken with the intention of causing readers less confusion, it appears that some confusion may still arise. For example, stakeholders with an interest in the instruments may read the Parliament's official report of the consideration of SSI 2015-397 and may read legal resources beyond legislation.gov.uk which might possibly have retained a record of that instrument. I'm wondering whether members have any comments to make, Stuart, please. Um, convener, you, you, in your remarks, you used the phrase that this has not been laid uh, for the approval of Parliament. And if I may, um, I take a different view. It has appeared in the business bulletin. Um, and at that point, I, I think in parliamentary process terms, it has been accepted by the chamber desk uh, put in the business bulletin and therefore should be regarded as having been laid. Now, I'm perfectly content with the explanations that have been provided, that because it's been agreed by the government who laid this order, that it is ultra viris and therefore has no legal effect, that the legal aspects uh, of the order concerned are adequately dealt with. Now, I welcome the fact that no printed uh, or otherwise published version will appear in the archives. But I think it still leaves open the question of parliamentary process that the order having been laid, there is no formal recognition by the Parliament that that laying should 
not have any future effect, in effect that the laying should be uh, undone uh, because it could not properly be laid. Um, there are clearly a couple of ways in which it could be dealt with. It could be dealt with uh, by the Parliament simply passing a motion agreeing that it be unlaid, uh, or it could be reported in the business bulletin that the previous report of the laying of this order uh, had no effect and therefore it should be regarded as not having been laid in the first place. Um, these are probably matters of process uh, and it may well be that the committee should uh, write to the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee to ask them to consider uh, whether the disposal of this instrument, which I think has been laid uh, but could not properly and legally be laid, uh, have actually been completed in a satisfactory way, and I suggest that we do that. Any other comments, John? I would just support Stuart Stevenson in what he says. Uh, for completeness, there should be a way of, as it were, unlaying instruments, um, and given uh, this is essentially an untidy and inelegant situation in which we find ourselves, I think it would be wise... Uh, to refer this uh, to the Standards Committee and perhaps have them consider it uh, as soon as possible uh, and get the, the job done and tidied up before the end of this session. Indeed. John? Uh, can I... Clearly the committee is, is agreed that that's what we should try to do. Can I suggest we might also just refer it back to the government and ask them to consider whether there's anything else they could sensibly do? Uh, and for the record, can I, can I agree with Stuart Stevenson uh, that it, um, I, I said that it hadn't been laid for approval, which I think would have been the process of bringing it to the Parliament again. There is absolutely no doubt, I think, among our legal advisers that it has been laid before the Parliament, and that part of the process has been done, and it's that part which undoubtedly needs to be undone if it is to be completely tidy. And if we can refer it to the Standards and Procedures Committee to consider that in short order, that would appear to be the way forward. Are we agreed? Great. Super, thank you. Uh, agenda item four is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. The Act of Sadaran Rules of the Court of Session, Sheriff Appeal Court Rules and Sheriff Court Rules Amendment, Sheriff Appeal Court 2015, SSI 2015 419. This instrument contains two drafting errors. Firstly, in paragraph 42A, which amends Rule 72 of the Act of Sadaran Proceedings in the Sheriff Court in the Debtors Scotland Act 20, sorry, 1987, 88. The reference to Sheriff Principle should have been omitted within Rule 72.3b. Secondly, paragraph 12.3a.4 substitutes a new paragraph 10 of Rule 23.1, Appeals of the Small Claims Rules 2002. This provision should have substituted a new paragraph 9. Lord President's private office has confirmed that those provisions will be corrected within a further instrument to be laid in due course. Does the committee agree to draw this instrument to the attention of the Parliament on the general reporting ground? Thank you. How soon would in due course be likely to be? The answer is when another suitable instrument comes forward, um, which probably doesn't take us any further forward. Right. Okay. I think we, that, that's just, uh, w would the committee agree with me that we would want corrections to be brought forward as soon as is reasonably practicable because we don't like the statute book being untidy? I think that's probably the point I'm trying to make, is that Thank you. as soon as possible would be welcome. Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on Management of Offenders, etc., Scotland Act 2005, Commencement Number 8, Order 2015, SSI 2015, 429, nor on the Act of the Journal, Criminal Procedure Rules, Amendment Number 6, Special Measures in the Justice of Peace Court 2015, SSI 2015, 443. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Thank you. Gender item 5, apologies Scotland Bill, members are invited to consider the delegated powers contained in this bill as amended at stage 2. The stage 3 debate will take place on Tuesday the 19th of January, therefore members should agree their conclusions today. It's proposed that members may wish to find the two substantially amended delegated powers to be acceptable. Does the committee agree to report that it is content with the delegated powers in the bill which have been substantially amended at stage 2? Yes. Thank you. 
That completes agenda item five and I therefore move this meeting into private.